at the Nigeria Professional Football League. Currently on a lockdown, like most other leagues around the world, clocks 30 today, Tuesday, the 12th of May. Now, to talk about this uh, and the growth of the league, we have Kunle Sholaja, the editor-in-chief, Sports Village Square, standing by to speak with us this morning on this story. Good morning, Kunle. Good morning. Mm, good to have you with us once again. Thank you very much. There's a whole lot of birthday celebrations today, Marcelo, and of course there's Jessica Amadi, the Rivers Angels um, media officer, and uh, Nigeria Professional Football League also having an um, anniversary today, 30 years of professional football played in the country. I think we have a bit of um, network issues, but we'll still reach out to uh, Kunle and, uh, of course, he will give us his own views on the growth of the Nigeria Professional Football League so far. Now, talking about the growth now, in your own opinion, do you think we've had more of positives than the negatives in Nigerian professional football? You know, um, 30 is a landmark, and I begin to think, in 30 years, what are the things that we can point out and say that, okay, we've actually achieved in 30 years? I think the first thing is growth of the league. Whether you like it or not, there's been some sort of growth and development. And number one, we've been able to produce a number of players that can actually go outside in Europe and actually thrive, and players that can also go into the Super Eagles team and play well as well. All right, we have Kunle back on the line with us. Kunle, good morning once again. Good morning. Yeah, um, we've talked about the celebrations of uh, Marcelo and Jessica Amadi, but of course, let's look at the Nigeria Professional Football League. 30 years anniversary, what would you make of this? Well, it's been 30 years of professional football. Overall, 40 years of National League in Nigeria, because the National League in Nigeria actually kicked off on January 8, 1972, and only really went professional in uh, May, 11, I mean, May 12, 1990. So it's been 30 years, and naturally one will expect things to be better because it's also considered that the English Premiership is just 28 years, and it has captured the attention of everyone in the globe. Now, I wouldn't want to draw a comparison between the English Premier League and uh, the Nigeria Professional Football League, but let's start off from when it kicked off or when you started watching football in Nigeria. I'm sure I wasn't born then. Uh, we've seen great clubs like the, with the likes of Bendel Insurance and, 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 and Co. Would you want to put us through quickly the, the growth of the Nigeria Professional Football League till date? Well, if one were to be really, really objective, I, I, I think I should say that the growth has been very, very slow. All the roadmaps charted in 1990, all of them, they have deviated from them. For instance, they gave all the 16 clubs that started there moratorium that within seven years, they should be able to have their own grant. No club in Nigeria has a grant of its own now that it is truly belonging to that club. Even the Yimba International Stadium is owned by the Abia State Government, not the club itself. So, they have deviated from that. And the product of a league is better uh, value through what they achieve. If you look all through from 1990 till now, only one player emerged as the top scorer of the Nigerian Professional League and has gotten himself established in the national team. And that's Ahmed Musa. So apart from Ahmed Musa, all other uh, players have just become one season hot shots and the Fisola. That is not too good for our league. You can just imagine in Premiership, just have one star for a season, and the next season, that star Fisola. And uh, you, you also go into Bundesliga, you just see a star in the particular season, the next season, nobody hears about that star. I don't think that is very good enough for us as a country and as a, uh, as a country that is supposed to be the bleeding light in virtually every human in the world, especially sports and football in particular. Now, talking about the highest goal scorers, I, I like the points you, you, you made right there. Uh, we've seen the likes of Mfon Udo and also M.M. Edouard, who, M.M. Edouard, for example, uh, was the highest goal scorer in one of the seasons. And the next season, he, he, he left the Nigerian Professional Football League for greener pastures. Do you blame the players uh, who do well in a particular season and the next season they look for greener pastures? No, it's not just people if he has gone for the last past job. How has he been fearing in the new club aside from Nigerian show that there is? The point is this I want to believe that 
most of the hot shots were made by the club. For instance, now when the club is at the brink of uh, leading, all penalty kicks belonging to that, I mean, awarded to that team, is automatically, auto automatically seeded to that player so that he can add up the numbers and at the end of the season, he becomes the top scorers. And I also learned from some of the players that there are some tricks they also play. Even when there are other scorers, they will all, because the top scorer is always around uh, the goal area, they will all swarm around the, the passive top scorer as if he has scored that goal. And automatically that goal is awarded to such player. So, but what it means, why our top scorers are not doing well in both national team and when they ventured out of the country is simple. The clubs lack structures. If you look at all the clubs, there is none that can really post of having a board of directors or a board of, I mean, a management board. You just have a chairman who is appointed and the chairman is the overall boss. He will speak in place of the coach. Even when you are talking about technical matters, the coach, I mean, the, the chairman of the club will feel that he should be the one talking and not the coach. Those are structural defects of the Nigerian League. The Nigerian League should be more, should play more attention on the players yeah. and the technical crew. You can imagine Manchester United now, you just have, I mean, just uh, getting to hear the voice of the Glazer brothers instead of having getting the voice of the coach, the coach or the voice of the players. So those people are just silent workers at the background. They are never seen except there is a big issue surrounding the overall running of the club. But here in Nigeria, you don't talk about a particular club without first of all talking about the chairman of that club. And in most cases, you have a one-man chairman, I mean a one-man board, who is only as able to the person who puts him there. That is, I mean, Nigerian football ought to have grown beyond that. Look at Egypt, for instance, that does not even boast of professional football. They call their players semi-professional. But you know the, the, the product of that, of that league, they constitute the bulk of their, of their national team players. And when you also uh, talk of inter-club competitions in Africa, Egypt dominates. So what we need to do is just try to, I mean, just to go and study what happens in other countries, why do clubs talk, uh, why do clubs do well in other countries, and clubs don't do well in Nigeria. Those are the things we should go and find out and be able to improve our name. 30 years is a milestone. One would have expected the LMC to come out, even during this lockdown, to at least celebrate that period and give us a roadmap to the next 30 years, so that when we are talking of 60 years of professional football in Nigeria, we will be looking back and say, oh, we have really done well. Very true. Now, what steps do you think the LMC should take uh, in order to remedy the situation to make the league better? Because uh, the fans are complaining about violence on the football pitch, the players are complaining about unpaid salaries, the clubs are complaining about um, no proper structure, a whole lot of things going wrong. But what do you think the LMC, what measures should they take in correcting these uh, issues? Well, what I think the LMC can do is to implement the rule book, which says that the clubs must have structures. You must have a board of governors, that is the directors, and then a management committee. And when you have those things in, uh, in place, then the clubs will, I mean, there will be greater attention. The clubs will not be run as companies, and their product will just be football. Elsewhere, that is it. They are first and foremost quoted companies in the stock exchange, not just, and that is why somebody like uh, Alaji Dangote we rather go where exact his energy trying to get Arsenal Football Club and buy a majority shares there than buying Cano Pillars because Cano Pillar is not run as a business. It is run for charity. Most of the people will turn the stadium to watch those matches come in for free. The fans club come in for free. And the supporters club are actually the supported people because they come into the stadium to enjoy free football. They are not paying. But elsewhere, you have structures 
where clubs will have their own fan base and the fan pay annual deals that they spend to sustain the clubs. It is not so here. Clubs are not on subvention of governments which will own most of the clubs. And in the case of individually owned clubs, they are run through the pocket of the owner of that club, not that the club is actually a big business or, or anything close to a business. Mm. So those are the uh, defects that the LMC should try and, and repair. If we have, I mean, there's nothing in the, uh, that compels us to have 16 clubs in the professional league. Yeah. If we can only raise 10 clubs, let's have 10 well run clubs as professional clubs and let the others just be uh, playing the national league. And then we now know that there's a difference between the professional league and the national league. For instance, if you look at the English Premiership, which started on February 20, 1992, they, they, it was a breakaway from the existing league when all the clubs decided that, okay, we are no longer part of that league. We want to run this thing professionally as a business. And they made TV right. The, the, I mean, the, the cash cow for the league. Here in Nigeria, if you take camera to any stadium to record the league mad, you will be chased out. Yeah. Whereas elsewhere in other clans, the league tried on television. Yeah. But there are no, no club who want his matches to be shown either in the late version or even uh, live. So those are the difference of our, of, of, uh, of our league. The Premier League becomes the the league, the Premier League of the world, because of television and because of the attention, they are paying attention to details, giving uh, statistics, telling us how much a player won, how much a player is paid. And when they have crisis like they have currently, it's, it becomes an open issue whereby we say, oh, clubs cannot uh, maintain the, the players they have because of lockdown, because there is no business is being run, no money is coming in, and their sponsors are not getting mileage. But here in Nigeria, even sponsors do so just for charity, not because they expect anything in return. All right. Thank you very much for speaking with us on this topic today. Thank you very much. It's All right. a pleasure. Good. Continue to enjoy the rest of your day. Well, that was Akunle Sholaja, the editor-in-chief, Sports Village Square, speaking on the Nigeria Professional Football League turning 30 today.